What's happening, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Games and Graps podcast. Sonny G here with Finn Steele and Steve. Hello. Hello. And um, yeah, we're here for a, another brand new episode to talk all things video games and wrestling and other stuff that we talk about, which good you stuff. Know, usually descends into pretty much nonsense, just like <laughs> this intro, which is. Uh, uh, I think I just did it all completely wrong, to be honest, guys. Yeah, it's all good. That's all right. it's, you know, it's all there. All the, all the stuff you need is there. Just in your yeah. order. It's fine. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> it's all there. The names are there. The name of the podcast. Let's go for it. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter how messy it is. It's all there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Finn, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm tired, but good. Yeah. I'm always I pointed tired, out that you were tired, and uh, I feel awful for it now. But uh, <laughs> I must say, your beard's looking, it's, it's looking delightful. <laughs> if you say so. I need a shave. But, I, don't, yeah. I don't think you need a show. I think grow it out. <laughs> What's like a massive man. bit? The 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 yeah. shoppers the shoppers of uh, Hinkley Stroke Babage, <laughs> um, you know, will be grateful for your beard. I think. <laughs> Is that my beard growing out my mask? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Go underneath the mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem I have. Oh yeah. <laughs> put the mask. Put, put my mask on. The beard is under the mask. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Same. To be honest, I have like bits coming out the side. Yeah. It's, <laughs> um, it looks proper hobo-ish, but you know it is what it is. You got to—they they don't make masks for for beard users. They make them for safety. True. They they do make they do actually they do make masks for beards. Really? They're they do. A bit, they're, yeah, they're a bit longer down on the you know below the chin. Oh, really? oh okay. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to buy one. It's ridiculous. You're not going to buy one? <laughs> no. Do you not get some? I need, with... to co- I need to cover my nose and my mouth, not my bloody beard. You know what I mean? Look, yeah, no, but look, style, look, style at the same time is important. Yeah, certainly for the office. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah, mm-hmm. your beard's looking great, actually. Have you, uh, have you styled it? Yeah, I've tried. Well, I've tried to. You know, with the obviously, like the barbers and places are open, uh, even mm. in in tier three, which we are. But they, you know, oh, I can't go anywhere near your face, so I can't get a professional to uh, shape my beard. So I'm having to go at it myself. Um, it, looks, it looks good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, yeah, maybe uh, when all this is done, you could uh, take up a profession as a uh, a barber. Maybe go and work in one of these, uh, you know, one of the four million barber shops that are open ar- around. Official beard Yeah, yeah. There is quite a, there is quite a lot of them. But, There's um, quite a lot. You say we're in tier three. You'd never know we're in tier three. You're looking around like town and things. It's always back. <laughs> shops are all open. It's like, what's the point? No. That's true. I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's I, crazy, I, I think it? it's, it's, I think it's insane that we're. Uh, it's crazy that the, the tier system is in place. Honestly, like going in the pub would be safer than going to Asda. I mean, <laughs> I went to Asda yesterday, and it was insane. Yeah, it's at my place usually. Without getting all political, I just don't understand why. So I, I could on a, on a on a weekend or any day, it doesn't matter. I'm, but I'm at work Monday to Friday. I can go and get a massage. Go and get a haircut. Go and get a tattoo done. <laughs> go and get something else done that involves someone touching me. But I can't go to the pub and I can't Can have a now? friend round to watch the boxing. Now, this was just his Thursday. That's he did all <laughs> those things on a Thursday. It's getting judged. Yeah, I did all that. Very nice. Yeah. 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 But do you know? Do you know what my, you know what my point is? Oh, of so course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Of I understand those, what your point you can is. Go yeah. and do all of those things, but uh, you know, I, I legally I couldn't have you round last night to to watch the boxing, Sonny. Crazy, yeah. But there we go. There must be some method behind the madness. Well, Boris Johnson listens to this podcast. I'm pretty certain. So mm. hopefully he's heard what you've said, and we'll take it on board. And moving forward, we'll just be able to do everything, all the stuff. Just because it, just because he doesn't get a bloody haircut. You know <laughs> what I mean? Well, he's a state, isn't he? He's an absolute shambles. I hate the bit of hair that like sticks out the side of his head. The bit just goes like that. Yeah. Well, what an idiot! Why, why would you wake up in the morning and be like? Oh, th- I think this looks very good, and uh, uh, yes, I'm just going to go out the house and on television, looking like this. And uh... Boris, is that you? Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> alas, I do not do my hair. Um, yeah, <laughs> it says alas a lot, doesn't it? Like I've I've heard it, does, it more yeah. times this year from his press conferences than in the previous 35 years on this earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's a it's, it's a funny old place. It's all on that. Uh, it is all in that, all definitely. Yeah. I'm pretty sure his hair is pristine, and then just before he goes in front of the camera, just a bit of that. Yeah, that's what I do. Ruffles his hair up, and then just comes good. across as a bumbling twat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, will you be taking the vaccine when it becomes available? 
Are you asking me? Well, either yeah. of you. It's an open question. I mean, it might as well. I mean, I get see a lot might of idiots might. all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. It might as well, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I will. Um, definitely, I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, it's. I know a lot of people say, look, why is there a vaccine when there's a 99.1% survival rate? These people it's are not stupid. about that. It's about protecting the vulnerable and stopping the spread and making sure hospitals can run as hospitals and not as COVID centers. Yeah, I'm saying that. It's go. like... It's what they're saying like the the nor point you know nor point nine percent of people who do die are don't matter like oh they don't matter they're just you know whatever <laughs> yeah as long as the ninety nine point one percent are all good then who cares it's like no that's not the point you idiots it will still exist afterwards yeah you know? I know people you know the there is a flu jab that's out there for people that need it and the flu still only, exists so. it's forty to sixty percent exit yeah. A vaccine doesn't cure things; it just makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, and if yeah. Uh, you know if the vaccine is going to help us get to get back to some degree of normal, where we you know we'd be able to do things like this in person, then that you know that'd be you know that's one hundred percent, yeah, completely fine with me, and I, I will one hundred percent be taking it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. But uh, yeah. you know these people that think Bill Gates is going to be, you know, tailing them or whatever when they take the vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, they're, they're oh, embedded no, with I, the you know nano machines. So we've had we've had smartphones for the best part of a decade now. People have got our data, information. They know where we go. They know what time we go for a shit and everything. <laughs> it does, you know, they don't need a yeah. vaccine <laughs> to get all that information. Yeah, and if Bill Gates wanted to trace me, I've had an Xbox for the better part of twenty years. <laughs> I, he, 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 <laughs> I'm that's not what difficult for. to find. I have an Xbox Live. That's why it's when Bush connects yeah. so hard that they're watching you twenty four seven. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buy a Series S. Uh, it, you know, just for just to play games, no other reason. Yeah, yes. promise, little, we promise. That little on that little on button's actually got a camera in it. <laughs> Bill's watching me get yeah. frustrated at Football Manager. I'm yeah. sure he gives a shit. What is this guy doing? He needs <laughs> to play four three three. He's he's got to drop Declan Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Finn's completely lost. I'm laughing like I know what that means for you. Know. It sounds funny. Yeah, just it's, 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 it sounds funny. That's all good. Yeah. <laughs> right. Back to uh back to the normal Games and Grats podcast. Yeah. We've we've done our serious bit. We've we've said our piece on the world. <laughs> now yep. it's time for some dick jokes. Yay, penis. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon um I've heard that um obviously like London's been in tier two. I wonder how our uh, Cockney friend has been. Oh. Since uh, mm. since all this has been going on, I don't know. What if we're still trying to want to sell high scores? Hey, oh, about, oh. can you attend oh. the high score, bloke? Oh, there he is. Ah, he's, he's yeah. doing good. He's fine. I would At least make he's still in tier three. Yeah, he's still <laughs> business as usual for uh, high score bloke in in tier two. Yeah, mm. he's doing good. He can, yeah. yeah, he's he's happy. <laughs> Finn, what have you been playing? Uh, what indeed? A lot of Demon Souls. Getting through that. Still an excellent game. How how is it? How how are you? How good. are you finding it? Really really good. Um, so I love Demon Souls. Obviously, uh, got a lot of nostalgia for it. It's obviously the very first Souls game. Um, a lot you know, very much a trendsetter. Mm-hmm. It pretty much invented the genre of games, which is very cool. Um, yeah. Mechanically, it is starting to show its age a little bit. Um, you know, it's brand new, but. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just like the gameplay side of things, but it's still very good. It's still, you know, it has it's been updated enough that it feels like a new game. And graphically, yeah, made, it's in, just... made in 2020, but it's really starting to show its age. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks amazing. Like, it's not playing it in cinematic mode, which is only 30 frames per second. But once you get used to it, it's not that bad. You don't really notice it as much. Mm-hmm. It just looks amazing. It's got my new TV as well. And it's just yeah, it's incredible. Ah, very nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. how are you finding your uh, new TV? It's really good. It's so pretty. The colors. I is think amazing. performance mode is the way forward the, now. I, I don't think I could. Like, <laughs> I tried. I've tried going back to um, thirty frames per second, like in games like Spider Man Miles Morales, and I just can't do it. Yeah, it's hard. I just wanted to wanted to see what it looked like. It's like I think it's like in cinematic mode. It's like a constant four K. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks so good. I love it. That's fair enough, you know, and uh, I'm happy that it's good. I am going to jump in and play it. Lol. So, guys, <laughs> it's time to get that death counter back out. 
twitch.tv forward slash games and graps i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna jump in and play demon souls uh probably at some point this week so uh you know probably play for an hour or so watch me die a lot and so that'll be a great laugh it's good times but i feel like i have yeah. to play it you know everyone who's lauded it is you know one of the best launch games ever and uh you know i feel just because of that I need to play it. Plus, I do like Bloodborne. I do like Dark Souls. I'm just not very good at it, but I love the challenge. So yeah, practice, um, practice I want to jump in and I want to play it. And yeah, I'm going to go for it. Good. Good stuff. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy laughing at my misery. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Um, what else? More Crash Bandicoot, which is still driving me insane. Is that why you look so tired? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. All night. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but no it's, it's the, the later levels are just insane and honestly it's starting to suck the fun out of the game for me <clears throat> <laughs> like the first playthrough amazing one of the best Crash Bandicoot games ever but the more you got to play the same level again and again and again trying to get like all the boxes without dying and then got to play it again the time trials and play it again in inverted mode it's just like alright <laughs> I'm bored of this now and it's so difficult to get all the boxes without dying Especially when so the boxes are so hidden, so hidden well. So you get to all the way to the end without dying, and then you get missing one box. It's like this is weird for such a linear <laughs> game. Yeah, it's crazy. But hey, we're gonna play. We're gonna do this podcast one week, and Finn's just gonna be a skeleton <laughs> with a Crash Bandicoot t-shirt. <laughs> Pretty much, because <laughs> <laughs> because Crash, Crash Four just wiped him out completely. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> You'll get there, Finn. I believe in you. Yeah, I believe in me too. <laughs> um, what else I'll play the um, Destiny 2 briefly download the PS5 version this looks insane like, it's, uh, it's unbelievable I don't know how to make this game look that good it's been out for years and yet it looks incredible better than ever I'm into 4k 60 frames per, uh, per second I uh, get 120 frames in the crucible like the multiplayer it's insane. It's insane. It's crazy. It's it's nuts. It's honestly, it's. Uh, I mean, I love Destiny Two anyway, but I, I played it the other day, and it's just, it's really quite astonishing how good that game looks. Yeah, I turned it uh, on. I mean, was like, I, literally, like, what? Whoa, <laughs> this looks insane. Yeah. Just like the little details and everything, the colors and just, you know, the, even like down to little grains on the rocks and, <laughs> and stuff like that. It's just completely nuts, and the details on the enemies is 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 amazing uh, it's it's still destiny 2 it now has a just a, a shitload of content yeah so much like, <laughs> um which is all free on xbox game pass as well if you have it that's awesome um and it's just it's it's just a crazy game you could probably just you know live off playing destiny 2 alone <laughs> but pretty much yeah but yeah i came down to stop and like look at things like in destiny 2 and dark souls just like stop and look at the like environment and just the, like as you say, like the textures on the walls, I'm like, wow, that looks so pretty. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I love it. I'm like that. It's Spider Man Miles Morales, just sort of looking at the detail on his suit. Yeah. Like, like all the little lines and just the way that his suit's made. It, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, for me, the, the, the biggest thing for new consoles is the performance mode. Like the, the, the frames per second, I, I can't believe how much of a difference it makes. Yeah. And you couple that with uh, prettier graphics and, um, you know, it, it only gives me more excitement for what's to come, you know, in the good, the coming years. You know, yeah, this is what time. we've got now. Yeah. And we, these consoles have been out a month. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. The future's bright. We're gaming. For sure. Yeah. Can't wait to find out. And I think that's about it for games. Oh, and being fit, of course. Getting getting fit. Oh yep. Yeah. Still uh still getting, getting stacked. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, it's really good. If you know anyone out there wants to you know get in shape or whatever, I highly recommend giving Ring Fit a try. It's really, really good. The one thing I never thought would happen on this podcast is us getting some sort of fitness advice from Finn Steel. <laughs> well, you know, it's you know, a bit of a rough year. Um, everything going on and before that it's been a rough year for me for my brain not working um, but now it's all good brain wise and I'm like you know I'm going to get healthy I'm eating better I'm you know stopped eating meat and all that stuff I'm... you stopped eating meat? yeah yeah I'm vegetarian now <laughs> are you really? yeah yeah that's fair enough that's a, that's a good lifestyle choice you're probably going to start doing this uh, podcast with your shirt off eventually <laughs> yeah exactly I'm like John Morrison I'm going to stop wearing shirts <laughs> yeah, yeah. no shirts ever maybe yeah. like a vest Exactly. Like, yeah. I'll be like a waistcoat, but you still get to see your sit back. <laughs> exactly. Good times. Like a pale Aladdin. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'd love to see him in a fez. <laughs> it'd be incredible. It'd be yeah. incredible, wouldn't it? Yeah, one yeah. day. One day I'll do that. Maybe next Halloween I'll dress as Aladdin. I'd love that. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but good on you, Finn. You know, uh, making some real positive changes. That's that's awesome. Yeah, it's good times. Yeah. Yeah. Good man. Thank you. You're an Adonis, GQ Man of the Year. <laughs> exactly. It's in, it's in the bag. It's in the bag. <laughs> I got this. G, GG Man of the Year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, GG. Oh. That's, like what this, this, that's what this week's thumbnail is, Finn. A, a GQ magazine with your face <laughs> over some bloke. <laughs> there you go. It's all... Solved. It. You were wondering what to do for uh, thumbnails, <laughs> and uh, we've just solved it just like that. We got it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Steve, what have you been playing? Uh... I've been playing quite a bit, actually, since the last time the three of us uh, got together for a, a podcast. Obviously, we, you and I, Tony, did a podcast last week that will never see the light of day. <laughs> yeah, um, it was good as well. It was long, hour and a half it, it was. It was. It was a really good we one talked. as well. But, uh, <laughs> so what happened there? What, what went wrong? Uh, Skype Drive wouldn't want to work. Um, yeah, <laughs> Skype oh. wouldn't download the video properly, and then Google Drive wouldn't process the video. Oh, that sucks. Uh, so yeah. it it's just lost forever and it was it was Lost really good forever. as well it was you know we, we talked for a good hour and a half we talked about AEW and nxt and the, nice. the sports games that you know you don't play so we thought we'd take that out of this and do it separately um to save you that yeah um yeah. but unfortunately it just didn't uh it just didn't work for us so uh, we did That's do true. it and we promised it was going to come out so for that we are sorry i know that uh we have our critics when it comes to putting content out but uh we'll prove you wrong we'll get there Oh, for sure. We're doing it. Uh, yeah, so game-wise, um, a bit of everything. A lot of Football Manager, uh, mm-hmm. as discussed last week, which um, I'm slowly becoming addicted to, as I have yeah. with all previous versions of Football Manager. Um, enjoy it, and then at the same time, get wholly frustrated with it. <laughs> Life of being a Football Manager, I guess. Um I've played a little bit of FIFA 21, uh, the next gen version, but not yeah. loads because Football Manager has taken over my life pretty much. Um, we've had a couple of games of uh, pro clubs on that with Denzel, which has we been uh, which which was a good laugh. Yeah, it was really um, good. been playing Sea of Thieves as well with you guys, which yeah, nice. It's just a fantastic game. I love it. It's it's so good, so good. Um, bit of Forza. Uh, oh, I finished uh, Fight Night, the, the story mode on Fight Night last night. Fight Night Challenge. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I think with all the boxing that was going on last night, I kind of got in a bit of a mood to, oh, I'll, I'll dip back into that and try and finish it. And I did, thankfully. Nice. Um, still a great game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I started Gears as well. Started the first mm-hmm. Gears game. The first one, though. Yeah, you play the really... uh, Ultimate Edition, right? Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I've never really played it before. And I thought, well, they're all there on Game Pass. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'll. I'll uh, I'll give them a go and work my way through through the, the series. So awesome. started that and yeah, it's cool. Really enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, great games. It's, you can shoot people and there's blood everywhere. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, they, 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 they're all really good as well. I mean, the one you could probably skip is Judgment, but um, right. because it's it's more of a... i trying to think. Finn, did you play Judgment? I did, but I remember virtually nothing about it. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much... Um, I think it's a prequel. But I'm not yeah. 100% sure. It's I have played that. it and did it, but I can't remember if it's a prequel or... This is one of those shorter games, like uh, Uncharted, Lost Legacy, and all that. Yeah. But worse. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, it, it was fine. It was still Gears, but it was just... Um, I think Baird was the main character. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you play 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and just skip Judgment, then I'll be fine. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh... Yeah, but I just need to be careful that uh, I don't just keep playing Football Manager because, you know, as as discussed, I've now got this nice next-gen console and a plethora of games to go at, and I just don't want to get stuck just playing Football Manager. As That's fair enough. Is. So, you know, I've got to vary it up a little bit. But no, still, um, still loving having my Xbox, and uh, yeah, yeah, amazing. Good, awesome. Still having makes, great, still having great fun with it all. Good, that makes me happy. And it's just, again, it, it goes, it, it stands to the test, you know, the testament to, you know, to Xbox Game Pass. The fact that you know, you've been, you know, boxing's been, you know, talk of 
social media and stuff this uh, last couple of weeks. So it's good that you know you can just download Fight Night Champion from Game Plus courtesy Game Pass, sorry, courtesy of EA Play. And you know we've been playing Sea of Thieves off from Game Pass, and it's a it's great fun. And you know this, it's just it's just a great service. It really is a great. I, I mean, it's it, it's just something we'd be able to talk about forever, really, in terms of the the value yeah. of it and how good it is. But it really is great, and it does open the door to you know, so many games that maybe you wouldn't even think about looking at. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Get more, uh, a few more games downloaded and away I go. Yeah, I think yeah. it's definitely something I'll get downloaded for PC at least. Um, yeah. Mm. I think all Xbox, like Xbox exclusive games come to PC now, don't they? So uh, yeah, yeah. once you get a few more games out there, I might sign up for that. It's definitely the cheapest way to do it and you get every other oh, game God, in existence yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So why not? Definitely. I mean, I think the idea was to us uh, for us to play Destiny Two um, now that it's had its Xbox Series X yep. slash S upgrade, nice. and I think it's crossplay. So, Finn, if you did want to get in on that, then uh, yeah, we get that try. I think we could all we should all be able to play together. Yeah, why not? Yeah, Sound good to me. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really good. Awesome. Um, as for me, I've been I've been um, flitting in and out of stuff this week. I'm um, I'm playing through the Avengers again, but this time on PS4 because I want to play the uh, the new DLC. I got it uh, really cheap, so I just uh, picked it up again. I wanted to play through it, get the platinum for PS5. Nice. Um, and I, I still really like it. Yes, I know that the end game is incredibly shallow, but the campaign stuff um, is good enough for me to warrant picking it up so I could play it on PS5. And the the, the new content's free, so it's yeah, yeah it feels not? like a bit of a no-brainer for me. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, and I love those characters, and I love I love the story, and uh, you know, it runs at sixty FPS on PS5, so nice. um, it felt, you know, right for me to 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 pick that up again. Um, I've started Cyberpunk. Oh yeah, how is it? And what I will say is that it's, I mean, it has to be disappointing for so many people. <laughs> really. It has to be. I mean, people have been waiting for this game for so long and I've played, I don't know, maybe three or four hours of it and I love the setting and uh, I like the idea of the game. But at the minute, I mean, it's rough. It, it's, I mean, it's just, I feel, I can't help but feel, I know it's been delayed so many times and it's almost like an ongoing running joke now, but... <laughs> it needed the delays and it needed more Yeah, because now they're going to have to throw patches at it to make it, you know, look and run better than it does. Apparently on Xbox one and PS4, it's just complete and utter shambles. Um, I'm playing it on Xbox series X and um, the performance mode. Yeah. It runs at 60, but it looks like ass. Yeah. And then if you have it on the, on the image mode, it looks a little bit better. But it runs like ass. So, you know, the, the, this this game isn't ready for public consumption the way it was meant to be consumed. Yeah. And for me, an, a further delay would have benefited it greatly. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, you know, hopefully over time it'll get better and it'll be as lauded as highly as The Witcher 3 is. But at yeah, the minute, getting... there's a good game in there <laughs> marred by... Um, just terrible, terrible bugs. And it's it really isn't the game that it, it should have been. I think it's good. I do think there is definitely a great game in there. Um, but I'm going to hold off now until it's fully fixed and it looks and plays the way that, you know, I paid £450 for this console. <laughs> I don't want to play a PS3 game on it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Or, I, I, you know, th- well, there is a ex- choice anyway. No, no, there's there's Xbox 360 games that run better and look better than Cyberpunk on Xbox Series X. Yeah, wow. wow. No two ways about it. I mean, there, there, there definitely is. I mean, Fight Night Champion that, that Steve's playing, that I would imagine that looks and runs much better than Cyberpunk does. GTA 4 is at a 60 FPS and also HDR upgrade on uh, really? Series X. That's awesome. And... You know, I, I I would even go as far as saying that probably looks and runs better than Cyberpunk does. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I remember the Fight Night games looking really, really good for the time. Yeah, they they were insane. They still yeah. are now. They look they look 
Like they they stack up still. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It look it looks great. Like final champion. It, it looks it looks excellent. Sometimes it's um, the, the the frame rate is a bit yeah, it's a bit glitchy a little bit. Yeah, you know when you 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 throw in punches and then nothing happens and three happen all of a sudden you're like oh okay shit <laughs> yeah, you can sort of forgive it when it. it's 13 years old though but yeah <laughs> the game yeah it's something like that isn't it it's, t- it's, it's at least 10 years old so Oof, yeah you well. can forgive it um yeah I've, I've seen a few things on online people sort of comparing what was promised with cyberpunk in terms of the look and the feel and mm-hmm. everything and then what it actually looks like i saw a, a i saw um one comparing it they've got a ps4 pro um and christ it looked it looked awful mm-hmm. it yeah looked, you know the, the light it just looked flat the whole game just looked flat yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's how i feel about it at the minute i think it just looks flat yeah i saw it sort of version yeah. like, like base ps4 and yeah it wasn't good um no. so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be waiting for like the official ps5 version i don't want to i don't want to buy the ps4 version and play it on my ps5 i'm gonna get the ps5 no version i think i think i'm definitely gonna wait now until the uh Same. the next gen upgrades hit because you know like i said there's a good game in there it just isn't there just yet yeah because you're getting good reviews it's like perfect score everywhere so yeah the game is good you just need to get just get the game you know patched and working and then it'll be an amazing game yeah there's a fantastic there really is a fantastic game in there um but I'm just going to wait now until the Series X upgrade, and uh, which will be next year at some point. And I'm fine with waiting because I've got you know plenty of games to get through. The Cyberpunk's not a priority; it never was. But yeah. um, I wanted to play it out of intrigue, you know, more than anything else. It was going to be this huge game, and um, you know, it's been hyped up for I don't know what six, seven years since it was announced or something like yeah, that. And okay. for it to come along and be as disappointed as it is, I don't want it to. Um, ruin my enjoyment of the of what will be a, a brilliant game. So I'm going to uh, I'm just going to hold off now. Yeah, no, maybe. Um, it's one, of the, one of them, isn't it? Where you've waited seven years for a game to come out. What's another six months for it? To well, be yeah, that's off? it. Yeah, that's exactly. it. I mean, you've waited so long. I mean, we always talk about delays on here on the podcast. Yeah, and we always say that you know if it's going to be delayed, it's obviously going to be delayed for a reason, and that's to make the game better. And mm. you know the. Yes, I know that Cyberpunk has been delayed for so long. And yes, I know that people wanted it so badly. Um, but, you know, you, you wait for the game that you want. Yeah, that's a saying I think yeah. was said by Miyamoto. It's like a, a rushed game is always bad, but a delayed game is eventually good. It's like, it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Cyberpunk's always going to have that, you know. Like, remember when it was really bad, <laughs> hovering over it. But uh, if yeah. you just wait... You know, if they waited and, and uh, get all the, everything patched and fixed, then mm-hmm. it would be amazing. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it will. CD Projekt Red are obviously an amazing developer, and they'll oh, yeah. get it right. I mean, this is this is too big of a game for them to screw it up. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to tarnish their, their own legacy by not getting this right. Yeah, exactly. Which I think was amazing. I mean, which they had, they had those bugs, but it's nowhere near as bad as, you know, Cyberpunk. Oh god, yeah. I mean, which is an amazing game, and you look at it now; it's still amazing. Like yeah. obviously, they've patched Incredible. it for they patched it for Xbox One X, and now they're patching it for Xbox Series X. So that game's still being well maintained. Yeah, awesome. I'm not even sure how we could look any better, to be honest. But <laughs> I know, right? It's incredible. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, but one game that I have been playing and I have been really enjoying, and is um, Immortals: Phoenix Rising which is uh, from Ubisoft. It was originally called Gods and Monsters. Oh, yeah. That's like the only... Uh, yeah, I don't know. And that's a, that's a really, really good game. It's made by the same people that make Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh. And you can tell almost instantly that it's made by the same people. The menus and stuff are the same, but it's uh, it's so fun. You know, the combat's great. The story's fun. It's a light-hearted take on Greek mythology and the stuff that... Um, you know, the stuff that comes with that. It's like a, it's a bit of a different take on it. Basically, you have the power of all the gods. And yeah, you, you play as Phoenix. You can either pick a male or a female avatar. And it's just a big open world. And it's uh, a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Cool. It's definitely nods to Breath of the Wild there. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Feels very much like it. Like, it's just oh, when you yeah. sort of, it's nowhere near as big, I would imagine, at least. I was gaming me now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's just very very good, and I'm it runs runs great, looks great on Xbox Series X, and um, 
you know, I've only played a couple of hours of it so far, but I'm really enjoying it. And I can definitely see myself uh, playing through the whole thing just because it is, it is so enjoyable. And um, for me, it's better than Watch Dogs. And uh, in my opinion, uh, at least for my personal preference, it's better than Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So um, there's a very, very good game in there that people should definitely not sleep on. It's, um, cool. it's very, very good. Yeah, I'll check that one out. Sounds good to me. But yeah, otherwise I've been dipping in and out of uh, dipping in and out of FIFA and Football Manager and stuff like that. Um, and I'm still working towards the platinum on uh, Spider Man Miles Morales as well. But I'm you awesome. know I'm having a great time gaming again. I, I love it. Um, every time I put my console on, um, you know I'm not struggling for things to play or you know I just want to play everything. And I'm I'm just so excited all the time by the prospect of having these great looking games running so great and and playing so great on these new consoles and I'm, you know, it's really given me the, the love of, of gaming back that I think maybe I lost a little during, um, during some of the last generation, but I'm, I'm having, a, I'm having a, an absolute blast. I'm having a great time. Good. Good to know. Game, game is, you know, a very special thing to a lot of people. For sure. To me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's, it, you can see how much it means to people just by the console launches, you know, Sony and Xbox both had amazing, console launches the biggest that they've ever had so, yeah. which is crazy considering you know the no one can buy one <laughs> yeah no one can buy one yet they've you know they've still had the biggest console launches of all time obviously people will get them yeah you yeah. know as as you know the weeks and months go on and it's just a, it's just a great time to be a gamer and um you know we're very lucky that we do have our next gen consoles because you know there mm. are people there that aren't you know so lucky and don't have them and won't have them maybe in, even in time for Christmas. Um, but you'll get them and you'll, you'll love them for the next, you know, eight or so years until a new one comes out. Yeah. Got eight years. We'll be almost 40. Oh, we'll be 40. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, be, yeah I'll be 39. <laughs> yeah, we'll be 44. If this podcast isn't famous by then, then there's just, you know, no hope. <laughs> we'll still be going though. We'll still be here. We will still be here, yeah. <laughs> we deserve a round of applause for that. We do. We do. <laughs> That's the wrong one. No, it's not <laughs> the right one. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that kind of content is exactly why we'll still be here in all that. In, you know, in years to come. Exactly. It's one that's around. Oh, well. Brilliant. <laughs> all right. So the Game Awards were just a couple of days back. Mm -hmm. And The Last of Us pretty much cleaned up. Yeah, well, that's yeah. probably won the most awards in uh, game awards history. Yeah, and cool. you know, deservedly so. I thought I thought it's uh, you know it's a great game. Obviously, yeah. um, for me, I think Ghost of Tsushima was a little hard done to because um, I think very highly of Ghost of Tsushima, and I think Sucker Punch did an absolutely incredible job on that game, and are still doing an incredible job on that game because I have played the PS5. Um, well, I have played the the PS4 version on the PS5 and. It runs and just looks unbelievable on the new console. So, Finn, if you haven't played it yet, it's definitely worth uh, jumping on and playing it because yeah. it's uh, it's so good. Absolutely, yeah. I need to get on that. Looks amazing. But for me, I mean, I would have given Ghost of Tsushima as Game of the Year. Uh, as much as I loved The Last of Us Part Two, and I thought the story was amazing, um, and you know, and everyone did an amazing job on that game. It's just a, it's a complete epic. Um. You know, I still think Ghost of Tsushima deserved a lot more love than it uh, than it got. Yeah, I didn't actually won anything, did it? It's nominated for loads of things, but never actually quite got any awards. Which is a shame. I think it won a couple of things, but nothing sort of. Um... It won best art direction or something. Oh, yeah, I think it won right. best art direction. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Oh yeah. But I still think it's. Um... I still think it deserved oh, yeah. a lot more love than it got. But you know. <laughs> Last year was such a well. This year was such a huge year for game releases. I mean, when you're when you are releasing next to such juggernauts as The Last of Us, I mean, Naughty Dog are just unbelievable, knocking out the park basically every time. And um, it was always going to be a tough <laughs> ask, you know, to to beat out The Last of Us in you know award stakes. But yeah, Ghost of Tsushima is, is so good. No one's you know there aren't people. It's not a game that's been slept on. People have played it and loved it. And interestingly, I don't think I've. I don't think I've ever seen as many screenshots taken of a game <laughs> than I did of Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, interestingly, Ghost of Tsushima won the Player's Voice uh, Award, which is like, you know, 
the publicly voted game of the year uh, oh, game. Okay, well so, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, so a lot of people like it. Beat that yeah, one actually I mean, beat out the Last of Us Part Two, so that's cool. Yeah, good stuff. So plenty of like plenty of announcements at the Game Awards. Yeah, but yeah. the coolest, the coolest looking was the Sephiroth announcement for Smash. Just an amazing trailer, like holy shit. Great trailer, yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. As a, as a Final Fantasy VII fan, it's like holy shit. Like people what? are such marks for Smash, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, big time. Uh, I didn't even play Smash, and like even I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. Um, yeah, I mean the, the trailer was cool. You just can't believe that they put this trailer together just for the announcement of one character. <laughs> I know, it's insane. Like Mario gets murdered. Uh, <laughs> it's like see all the yeah. Like you see like guys like Banjo Kazooie and there Bayonetta. It's like it doesn't awesome crossover. <laughs> it's completely random. Um, oh God, Smash is insane when it comes to crossover. It's, it's yeah, it's nuts. So cool. So cool. Um, but there was, you know, there's loads of loads announced. Uh, Devolver announced uh, a bunch of games that are coming. That was on the pre-show, and uh, Master Chief's coming to Fortnite. Yeah. So he's going to be fighting alongside Kratos. People <laughs> are really happy about that, as yeah. you can imagine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> people fucking hate Fortnite, man. People really hate Fortnite. Yeah, it's because it's popular. I I joke, but I don't, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm indifferent. I don't hate it. I'm just like whatever. I when I play it, I enjoy it. Yeah, like it, it, it plays great. You know, it's it's not a it's not a bad game at all. Yeah, obviously it's not good. You know, it's just one of the most played games ever in the history of games. <laughs> so obviously it's a good game in there. Yeah. Um, just because so Kratos yeah. is dancing doesn't you know doesn't mean that it's a bad game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the trailer for Master Chief actually made me laugh when the the little thing goes up to the fridge, grabs a drink out, and then there's Master Chief in the fridge, and it's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it, it made me laugh. I, I I have no problem with Fortnite at all. I know people do, um, and that's fine. But um, I think people have a problem with Fortnite because of how successful and popular it is. Yeah, and obviously, you know, you want to pin, you want to punch kids who are doing flosses in <laughs> shops, but that's really stopped now. And now they're doing TikTok dances, and you want to punch them for that instead. Oh yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. Just pick yeah. Them, chuck them out of the shop. Get out of here. Yeah. Just yeah, hey, TikTok. no TikTok bullshit in this shop. <laughs> yeah. Bloody TikTok. That's going to become a thing soon, isn't it? There's going to be signs on doors of shops saying <laughs> no TikTok dancing in here. Yeah. There should be. There, should, there definitely should be. It's, it's, uh, I know we sound like miserable old men here, <laughs> but it's we um, are. I have no interest in seeing people filming TikTok dances in shops. Yeah. No, no. If I could lift my leg that high, I would Hulk Hogan big boot them in the face. <laughs> but I can't because I pull my hamstring. 100%. <laughs> hamstring would be gone. I'd go for it. It'd be like, but and it literally would come crashing down and it would hurt inside. Yeah. No two ways about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll give it a super kick, but end up kicking him in the stomach or something. Yeah, I'd have to. Yeah. But maybe like in the shin, like sweet shin music. <laughs> yeah. Sweet yeah. shin. <laughs> That's what I'd have to do instead. I can't because there's no way I'm getting a big boot in there. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> that's why. That's why I sit behind the commentary desk and not. Uh, I don't get inside a ring. <laughs> Sensible. Yeah, yeah, smart. Thank you. I appreciate it. What else was announced at the Game Awards? Um, we got new Perfect Dark game got announced. Oh yeah, of course. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I had no idea what that trailer was until the end when, um, the uh, the. Like the voice said, "Agent Dark," and I was like, "Yeah, same here." Oh <laughs> um, but that's going to be what? amazing. Yeah, very cool. Um, it's a Microsoft game, isn't it? They own Perfect Dark now. Yep. So, so the yeah, initiative of making that game, uh, no gameplay. People have been critical of it, but you know, it's just been announced. So give them, give them a bit of time. I mean, Xbox at some point are going to have a shitload of exclusives, you know, coming their way, yeah. and it's just about being patient. It's uh, it's all a process, and these things, these things. Do take time, yeah. And because uh, they want to make the best exclusive games that they possibly can. I mean, they put exclusive games out on Xbox One, and people just slay them they? straight away. See if these people hated it, but mm. we I, we absolutely love it. Like mm. it's a great game. But I think people just didn't understand it. Crackdown, not a bad game by any stretch. People slated it. It's this running joke of um, you know Xbox games getting six out of tens and all this sort of stuff. So can you blame them for wanting to take their time with making these games 
when you because I thought you're just gonna get people going, oh, another eight out of ten game, another six out of ten game. <laughs> yeah. That's why Fable's gonna take so long. That's why Perfect Dark has just been announced. That's why they're taking then, you know, Forza will be amazing anyway, but that's why they're taking the time. That's why Halo's been put back so they can refine it and make it make it good just to fucking shut the naysayers <laughs> up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They, they released that trailer way too early. Like the gameplay trailer. It just didn't look good. No, it <laughs> like, didn't. I thought it looked no, amazing when it comes just... out, but that trailer was just, no. <laughs> what was no, it was, out? I was so unbelievably underwhelmed by the, the Halo trailer. Yeah. And I, I know that now that they've gone away and they've, they're, they're going to refine it, then, it, you know, it will be a good game. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I have no problem with games being delayed or taking their time to come out, as long as when they do come out, they are good. Cyberpunk, I'm looking at you, motherfucker. <laughs> <all right? laughs> yeah. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we've also got a completely random Vin Diesel trailer for Port Arc 2. Like, <laughs> oh, for sake, why does Vin Diesel still keep getting in these video games? <laughs> right, Chronicles Wait, of Riddick on the Xbox things. was good. Yeah, that was great. I love that game. Everything after that, Wheel Man. What the <laughs> fuck is that game? <laughs> Fast and the Furious, what are you doing? Mm. Making them games. <laughs> Arc 2. Like, Arc 2. Enough films. We don't need a game. Yeah, like Ark, wasn't that like a survival game that didn't have a story? Or yeah, it still is. It's just like a random game where you like build and level up a character. It's like a... Yeah, now Vin Diesel's got his... I saw a really good tweet that said, The Past and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I like that. <laughs> like Vin Diesel's That's just good. walking around. He's now a dinosaur horn. He wants to be fucking Chirac. <laughs> oh, too well. Mm-hmm. the game. It's 16 pack. Yeah, <laughs> neck down. All the, all the, that's going to be Finn soon. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Finn fit, and it's going to be fit Finn. It's going to have like a six. It's going to have like a, a forty-eight pack from like is Adam's apple down. <laughs> That'd be too many muscles on muscles. Yeah, all the way down to that like bit of skin, just you know above your penis. <laughs> that bit of skin, yeah. That's where Finn's pack is going to end. Finn pack. Finn pack. Yeah, Finn pack. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Uh, this is why this podcast is the best, by the way. Yeah. Like, everyone else takes themselves way too seriously. We're talking about penises and six packs. <laughs> That's why we're the best. That is exactly why we're the best. Yeah. You, yeah. you will not get uh, other marquee podcasts. They will sit there and they will tear apart people's wrestling ability, despite the fact that um, the only ring they have is an onion ring. <laughs> I thought like, you were going somewhere else. With that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could have, I could have in true games and grab style. I could have. Yeah, so I had to pull back. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, hey, look, I felt Onion Ring was the classier way. Yeah, hmm. that's fair. Yeah. yeah, we'll have a laugh, but we're classy at the same time. Of exactly. course, yeah, we, we, you ring. know, we don't want to be disrespectful because there are people, you know, who may have sensitive ears listening to this podcast. They've already turned off, but <laughs> you know. We, we we still like to be a little bit. We like to keep a little bit back. Exactly. Yeah, I forgot even what we we're talking about. Vin Diesel. Yeah. Yeah, Vin Diesel. Um, uh, up to. I'm guessing there's going to be a story yeah, mode in there or something this time. Oh, I don't. Know. What's the point? I don't care either. I'm not even. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to play it. Yeah, same here. Unless it turns out to be like completely amazing, but I doubt it. No, it's not going to, is it? No. None none of them games that Vin Diesel does are good, apart from the Chronicles <laughs> of Riddick on the original Xbox. Yeah. That was the last Everything one. he's touched. I I know he likes video games and I know he like what he has his like video game company and, and stuff. But Vin, along with your acting, your video games are terrible. <laughs> yeah. You will no doubt wear the same vest that you wear in every single film <laughs> in Ark. They haven't even invented vests at this point, <laughs> and you'll still wear one. Yeah. Your animal skin vest. Yeah. No, he <laughs> he'll just have a white one. You have a wife beat a vest on and like some mm. fucking pants made out of leaves. <laughs> yeah. If you've listened to this podcast, tag Vin Diesel in it on Twitter uh, or just tag this clip. Yeah. If he wants to come on and explain himself, then, uh, you know, we'd be happy to have That's, him. I've just had a notification through. He's blocked us on Twitter. And <laughs> <lost> on <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vin Diesel hears all. Yeah. yeah. Now, he's a fan of the podcast, or he was until you've just gone on a rant. Yeah, well, you know, really. it, it, it's his own listener. fault for making terrible video games <laughs> <laughs> and films. Yeah, I mean, don't, I like the Fast and the Furious as much as the next person, but there's probably too many of them. You reckon? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. John Cena in, in now. What are they on now? Eight, nine, ten? I think nine's coming. 
Nine to Cena's one is on, Cena's in the next one, isn't he? Yep, see this the new Vin Diesel. Hopefully yeah. he won't start making video games. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to play video games with an invisible character. So. <laughs> hey. Hey. Arc 3 starring John Cena. I'd play that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see T. Uh, uh, <laughs> boo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even deserve the... Uh, no, it doesn't. No, no, no. Just move on. No. We move on. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we had like a, a tumbleweed... Sound. <laughs> yeah, I'll get up next time. Yeah, Finn, you need to you need to get, grab the sound bites of that wrestling clip that I tagged you. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god, yeah. It's so good. good. Like we, we, it, it, it feels like it's just, <laughs> it's just it's just us all over. Yeah. I'm coming for you, and I'm coming hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna eat your ass. <laughs> yeah. Why do they all want to eat ass? Nah, you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think it probably meant something differently back in the nineties than it does now. Maybe. Yeah. You get, you know, these millennials. Yeah, eat, yeah my ass, eat my ass, daddy. All that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this goes back it, to that ring thing from before. Exactly, yeah. Every, every, comes back full circle. That's it does. Kind of oh, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Move on, move on, quick. No. <laughs> I'm married with two kids. What am I doing? <laughs> 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 Uh, oh yeah, I walked in. They're my... going to grow up with a great sense of humour. What can I say? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so I walked in on my boss and like some supervisors talking about. Oh, where's, um, where's this going? <laughs> you remember ages ago they like someone put out a list of things like how to have sex while in you know lockdown. And I was talking about like wearing masks and things, and I just walked in on right. saying like talking about oral sex. It's like I walked in, I was like, what? And said, Finn, are you would you lick an arsehole? No licking arseholes. I was like. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was just like, what? Where did this come from? <laughs> what was your response? Is the most important thing in this uh, this whole situation? Like too late. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, just, just said I've not, I've just come in to get some beans so put out yeah. in the shop. Can you... But now I may as well take my pants down while I'm here. <laughs> yeah. This is a completely <laughs> random thing to hear from your boss. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's apparently awesome. that's the thing. You're not supposed to, you know, do that. That's all something I say. Well, no, I can't imagine this. I mean, I wouldn't do it. I never have done it. No, I, not my, not my... Just, just during lockdown. After, <laughs> yeah, after, after, this, after you've had the vaccine, fucking it's... lick away, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Uh, yeah, we'll Denzel on the podcast. We'll, um, <laughs> we'll we'll ask him about it. See see what he's got to say about the topic. Uh, <laughs> one time. One time. Um, <laughs> I hope, I hope he's listening. I hope he listens to this. I hope he does as well. Well, we'll tell him. We'll say, look, you've got to listen to the podcast because you get a mention. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We won't tell him why. About no, 45 no, minutes in. Not, yeah. <laughs> we'll, tag, we'll tag him in the link as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I've lost. I'm lost here. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Yeah. Vin Diesel was doing a game and... Oh yeah, talking about, about, and... about Vin Diesel's ring hole or something. <laughs> I can't something like that. Just like games that have been announced. Hey, uh, so like that's, the, that's the that's the uh, that's the name of this week's podcast. Ring Diesel. There you go. Perfect. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bunch of games announced. Um, there's like an Evil Dead game, which is cool, random, and pretty cool. There's a game called The Fist, which is like, yeah, okay, why not? <laughs> Made by Vin Diesel as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there's that uh, Left 4 Dead game. Uh, Back oh, yeah, that Earth. was good. Yeah, that yeah, was cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, loads of games. Um, there's new like Mass Effect game I think they talked about. Untar- yeah. Mass Effect game. But yeah, cool, lots of cool things. Lots of you know, not so cool things. But yeah, it's a good show, I thought, overall. Yeah, good show all around. They did it really well. Yeah. Considering, you know, they can't have people there. And uh, I thought they, they, they just put on a really good show. Yeah. So Very well cool. done to everybody involved in the Game Awards this year, J- Jeff and all them people. Good stuff. Yeah. Well done. And congratulations Still to us. providing us with this sort of entertainment, um, you know, during such a difficult time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just like us. Yeah. <laughs> providing you with that, <laughs> with that quality content. <laughs> the thing is, right, this is the first thing that I've done since I woke up this morning. When exactly. I woke up. Yeah. Literally came downstairs, set my laptop up and like the stuff I need for podcasting, 
and I've had one coffee and nothing and nothing else. And so this is this is the conversation that we're having. Yeah, it's the, you know early morning, even though it's like quarter past twelve. Uh, yeah. Podcast. Yeah, um, we should probably move on to to wrestling. I know the time is uh, time is of the essence today because Finn's got to go serve the masses and yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about weird sex stuff with his boss. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, wrestling, I mean, do we, I'm fine. I don't know about you guys, but I'm finding uh, WWE very, very difficult to enjoy at the minute. I don't know why. I just Did you give me a I watch it and I'm just like, Pfft. yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, there are good things in there, like the Roman Reigns stuff, really, really good. Um, I don't know if you watched Talking to Mac, which he left to admit, but there's this thing between Paul Heyman and Biggie going yeah. on. Paul Heyman's so good. Paul Heyman's great. Um, you know, and the way he's portraying his character along with Roman Reigns at the minute is just, I think that just shows how much of a great performer he is because mm. he's changed his role up completely differently from when he was with Brock. And, you know, he's now playing, um, you know, more of a role of a silent advocate. Obviously on this week's SmackDown, he did give him advice um, on what to do about Kevin Owens. and um, But it's all done so well and with such a great level of detail mm. it's um i mean paul Heyman and roman reigns this year have been have been uh real mvps for me in terms of uh yeah. you know performers yeah. in wwe definitely i think smackdown is the show at the minute isn't it raw i couldn't give two oh, hoots about God, to be raw honest is i just not great. i don't hot. even no. you know I, I mean i have found it since i've mentioned this before since the wrestling went over to bt sport I have found it difficult to keep up with because uh, I don't pay for BT Sport, etc. Um, but even just trying to follow it, you know, going on on WWE.com or whatever, I just think, you know, I don't care about Raw. I just yeah. really, I really don't. SmackDown, I do. SmackDown, I look at, and and uh, I keep I look at obviously NXT as well. But um, yeah, Raw is just it's painful. It is painful. It's it's a it's a tough watch, and then you read stuff about WWE, and you know, read just a couple of days back that um, Keith Lee's been sent back down to the performance center to to work on his in ring work, and you just think, yeah, that's this, insane. This old man's serious. Yeah, it was like him, I just Otis and Dio, I think. Like Otis and Dio, yeah, Dio sure. Madden, and uh, that guy that is walking around with AJ Styles. Oh Omos, yeah. is it? Yeah, I think so. Like that, yeah, I um, guess I can see that. Oh, are they, are they the others? I didn't see who the other names were. Yeah. But, but it's like Otis what, Keith Lee, won really? money in the bank. <laughs> Keith Lee has been um, in WWE now for around three years. You know, you know, being in NXT and stuff as well. Vince needs to go and... back and watch NXT. <laughs> like, 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 seriously, watch I mean, Keith Lee matches. I, you don't. He doesn't need any more training. Yeah. He's amazing. I just don't. <laughs> the the logic behind some of the decisions that Vince McMahon makes is, I mean, you know, we could we could bring up a million examples of you know idiocy on Vince McMahon's part, but I don't know, man. I, it, I think, you know, the things, especially this year, I mean, he's gone off the rails. This pandemic has really messed with him, but yeah, you he know, fails to acknowledge it, doesn't he? That's, he I can't accept, he can't accept his own failures. Yeah. I think he just wants everyone to wrestle the same. Like Keith Lee is like, ah, oh, Keith Lee, you shouldn't be doing uh, high flying moves. Blah. Get to wrestle like every other big man we've ever had. It's yeah. Like, but uh... that's the, you know, the high, the, the stuff that Keith Lee does sets him apart from the other big men that WWE have had over the years, you know? Exactly. And yeah. I think Vince McMahon and the decisions that he makes and the way he goes about business is what makes WWE such um, a difficult prospect. Now, you know, I've made no bones about it on the podcast before. I'm a WWE guy. I'm a lifer. You know, it's what I've always watched. It's what I've always enjoyed. Mm, you know, and, I, and I will always watch WWE. But at the minute, it's I think it's it's at a point where... It's becoming very difficult to enjoy. Yeah, even mm. NXT. NXT is still really good. But recently, like War Games is excellent, obviously. War Games. Um, but War Games. <laughs> but really, the storylines at the minute aren't really there, I I find. It's like not a whole lot going on. Um, I'm not really super invested as I used to be. Like, matches no, are still, I agree. Matches are still excellent, but the story, yeah. story-wise, story is just... Mm. Yeah, I mean, next week we've got Pete Dunne versus Kyle O'Reilly in the number one contenders match. I That'd mean, be that's... That, alone is enough to tune in but the thing is with nxt you, you think yeah they're going to be able to have that incredible tv match um you know we're going to be in for a real treat but if you were to see that same match advertised on raw you'd be like 
that's something shit's going to happen in that match. Yeah, there'll be some sort of disqualification. There'll be running. Pat McAfee will come in. Yeah, and it'll be a triple threat at the pay per view that's coming. And it all just seems so, um, so obvious. Yeah, and it yeah. Ju- it's just oh, I don't know. I mean, the changing can, of names and all this. I sort can of forgive st- NXT. I can forgive NXT a little because they've had they've been hit with injuries to big names. Yeah. Um, obviously, the you know. <laughs> You had um, Karrion Cross had the, had the belt. Um, then he got injured. He was injured straight away. He was injured in the match that he, he won it, didn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. Then so. Balor as well. So all sort of plans have gone out of the window. So they've almost with NXT, and this is going to sound really marky, but they've almost had to kind of go back to what they know is good. And if you look at kind of as much as I did enjoy, enjoy War Games last week, um, you had Gargano winning. Champa winning and Undisputed Era winning and that's kind of just been what it's been for the last three years hasn't it with yeah, NXT really much. Um, and I think you know that it'd been interesting to see without those injuries you know would those guys have uh, have moved up and would we have fresh new storylines in in uh, in NXT or have they just kind of gone look we've got to play it safe till these guys are back yeah, that's, and yeah. Then, that's... We'll, then we'll move on and have new storylines I think you're absolutely right there in what you're saying. And I, I, I expect that NXT will now go back to some sort of regular formula now that Karrion Cross is back mm. and Finn Balor's, you know, injury free. And, you know, the fact that we're getting Pete Dunne versus Kyle O'Reilly and they're both even in the conversation to be yeah, in the championship cool. picture is amazing to me. And oh uh, I'm just hoping now that we can, you know, progress forward with NXT and it can get back to being the, the, the driving force, you know, the reason to watch WWE that it that it has been for so long. Um, but Raw at the minute, so difficult to get in, you know, to get into. I mean, I can't even remember the last time I even watched mm. a full episode of Raw properly. I usually fast forward through it. It's really not good. Yeah. I like Drew McIntyre um, champion. He's really great. But everything else. Yeah. Um, like The Fiend and Randy Orton. It's like, I love The Fiend. I like Randy Orton, but this feud just makes no sense. And like they're both yeah, sort of I heels don't... as well. It's like, uh, I like Alexa Bliss as well as with the Fiend. That's very cool, but this feud makes no sense. Yeah, I mean we've already had Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton a long ago, long ago. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's almost like they're they've they've run out of ideas and don't know what to do with either of them. So they're now rehashing that feud and going back to when Randy Orton burnt down, um, you know, the house and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. um, if I feel like it's just a case of we don't know what to do, this year has been shit. So <laughs> here's some shit back. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, SmackDown is good, uh, but again, you know, I still find it very difficult to to enjoy because I just feel like we're getting the same thing over and over again. You yeah. know, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Uh, I like them. I like Robert Roode. I've never been a fan of Ziggler, but they do as a tag team. They do absolutely nothing for me. No. Yeah, it's another one of those throwing together tag teams, isn't it? You're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. Throw them together. You're a tag yeah. team now. Go for it. Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns, you know, that has the potential to be a great feud. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know that Kevin Owens isn't winning that championship off him. Yeah, yeah. So it, no it makes it so hard to get invested because anybody they put in front of Roman Reigns at the minute, building up into building up to WrestleMania, you just know that he's not losing that championship. So you almost feel like the the feuds themselves, although, you know, yeah, great TV. Roman Reigns is great, Paul Heyman's great, Jay Uso's been great, mm. but you almost feel that they don't, these feuds aren't going to mean anything because you don't think, you, you just know that Roman Reigns isn't losing that championship because all, all, otherwise all of this is for absolutely nothing. Yeah. And if he loses it to Goldberg at WrestleMania, Ugh. I'm done. Why is Goldberg you coming back? Ugh. I'd rather see The Rock. Yeah. No, I, would, I would much rather see The Rock versus Roman Reigns. Even Cena. But apparently Vincent Mann doesn't want to see that. Yeah. Even Cena versus Reigns, I'll take over this. Oh, God, yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, as much as I like Drew McIntyre, um, Raw, he really misses a big star. You know, I, I mean, yeah. I don't mean to shit on McIntyre with that because he's excellent as the champion and I love that. Randy Orton isn't that big star, even though he's he is a big star, but he's not the face of your company. No, not the And obviously they're trying to build Drew McIntyre to be that, but uh, it's... It's in such a weird place at the minute, WWE, because SmackDown's got that big star. Roman Reigns is the biggest star in 
you know, all of professional wrestling at the minute. I know Kenny Omega's massive and that's great, but Roman Reigns is the biggest star in professional wrestling right now. Yeah. You talk about Roman versus Goldberg. Like, we already know how that match is going to go. Like, of course. spear, kick out, spear, kick out, jackhammer, spear, kick out, spear, spear. Uh, either Roman or Goldberg wins. It's like, yeah, they're going to bill it as the Battle of the Spears. <laughs> exactly, Who gives yeah. a shit about any of that stuff? Yeah, Superman punch, spear, kick out, yeah, spear. No one cares. <laughs> yeah. There's only two moves. Well, the only two moves Goldberg knows it's jackhammer, spear. And even sometimes he can't pull that off. It's like. Just... Well, the jack, he can't do a jackhammer anymore. Can <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Fuck yeah, I nearly killed the Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah. So at the minute, WWE is really tough to watch. I mean, mm. obviously, you know, we will continue to to uh, to cover it on the podcast. Obviously, next week we've got TLC. Uh, so when we do the podcast next week, we'll do predictions for it, and um, you know, we'll 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 talk about the card in depth, and we'll you know we'll try and we'll, we'll try. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try to be excited for it as we'll much as we possibly can in terms of doing our predictions for the show and all that kind of thing. But at the minute, it's just a very tough watch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep covering WWE. Obviously we will, but um, yeah, the minute it's just, it's, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. Very much so. So yeah, I mean, so but next we're week. Heading, in, heading into, sorry, heading into a new year, new year, which means Royal Rumble, which means then you're, you're not far away from WrestleMania. So it's always a, I've I've always found as I've got back into wrestling over the last six five or six years or so, this last quarter of the year is always a bit of a bleh, yeah. The I mean, WWE. TLC is definitely the the least yeah hyped pay per view of the year. You might as well have you might as well, and I've said this for for years is Survivor Series should be the last pay per view of the year, and then the next one should be Royal Rumble. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. I've Big I've all, I've I've said that for years, and I think that and and. I, 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 I personally, I start to get hyped again around Royal Rumble, on the road to WrestleMania, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I mean, another thing, really, I've praised WWE this year for some of their some of their writing and some the way they've yeah. dealt with the pandemic, but they've run out of ideas towards the end of the year, mm. and I feel now that they need fans back because whether you know, although I have praised you know some of the storylines in terms of you know the way Roman Reigns has gone without fans because I don't know if it would have worked necessarily with them. Yeah, mm. but now you start to think that fans maybe do dictate the way that WWE moves yeah. at times, and I think they're now running out of ideas and you know maybe running out of motivation to a degree. Um, they're padding the, for time. They are. They, they are padding. For, they're, they're basically plodding along until fans are allowed back, and I think WWE needs them back desperately. AEW obviously have got fans. Um, not that many in there at the minute, but they've got them and it's making a huge difference because that show is, you know, it's money every week and NXT has fans, but you know, like we, like we mentioned previously that they've suffered with injuries and stuff like that. And I do anticipate that show getting better, but um, do, you know, the, the two main WWE shows, they need fans back. They need fans back yeah. Um, sooner rather than later as well. So I think they'll have some, um, have some by the way rumble. Because why wouldn't they so. be the same without fans? It's like I mean, they're in a baseball field now. You yeah, know, there's, there's no reason why they can't still have Thunderdome. They can have part Thunderdome, part fans. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, like they do with NXT. Yeah, yeah, like they do for NXT. Um, you know, AEW are in a massive stadium and they've got fans padded around the arena. You know, last night the boxing they had a thousand people in whichever arena they were in. Yeah, was it Wembley? Wembley, 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 uh, Wembley Arena. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a there's a th- there was a thousand people in there, and even you know the noise that they made, you know, made up of you know made up for complete silence that we've had throughout you know the course of the year, mainly. So you know, the piped in fans feels yeah. very forced, especially mm. you know during like Miz TV segments and shit like that, where they're piping booze and cheers, and it just doesn't have the same feel. It isn't organic. It's fans. Mm. WWE controlling what you should and shouldn't, you know, cheer and boo for. Well, yeah. they do with the Thunderdome, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They they tell you what to when to boo, when to thumbs down and when to cheer and things and like that. And it's just so forced. You need pro wrestling is all about. I mean, without without the fans, it's nothing. It's the same for football. It's the same for any live sport. The fans are what drives it, what gives you know you the motivation to do better. And it's all well and good having the Thunderdome and dictating when people should thumbs up and thumbs down and uh, back up, back out, 
you know, tell me what you want to do now and all that sort of <laughs> stuff. But um, WWE needs the fans more than a- anybody. Yeah. Big time. Yes, agree. Agree. Yeah. But next week, like I said, we will do the TLC predictions and uh, we'll talk about Raw and and, and SmackDown a bit more in depth going into that show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I only want to shout out Austin Theory. Like when he took off his mask with with, his, with Gargano, he's like, "It's me, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> it was oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> it's been me, me all along, it was Austin. Me all along. <laughs> it's just out to yeah. That's very good. <laughs> I saw. Uh, I don't feel for Austin Theory, but you know, it seems like every time he's on TV, something else surfaces about something he's done in his past. I don't want to go into yeah. that kind of stuff on this podcast. But the same. Um, there's, there's so much I hope that he can weather the storm and that people aren't just out to get him um, because of. Oh, I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to yeah. be that no. voice at it, all. It reminds me of facts. like a young Randy Orton, like get into trouble a lot, but you know perseveres, and hopefully he can get through it and become something yes, special. Yes, absolutely, Finn. I completely agree. Yeah. All right. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the podcast. We are going to be back next week with TLC predictions, and yeah, we'll try and be a little bit more optimistic about WWE. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, we'll <laughs> smile when we talk about it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Pray that Keith Lee's on Raw and uh, not just doing uh, big chops <laughs> yeah. and body slams, which is what Vince McMahon wants him to do, clearly. Yeah. yeah. I think Vince knows that he was in the, you know, did the Indies and all that. I doubt it. No, yeah. no, but wrestling doesn't they, exist outside of WWE. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly, they, they, yeah. they hire, they, they, hire these, they, they, bring, they bring in these, well, it's true. They bring in these new recruits, don't they, that have got no wrestling background. And it's so that they can... Uh, Say, oh, we've trained them the WWE way. Mm. What's that, hey, Keith Lee? You, you had matches in, in a nightclub in Coventry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get that out of you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll train that out of you. Yeah. Hey, take that mask off Dijakovic, put the two of them in the main event of Raw, and watch them kill it. You know, and, yeah. you know yeah. all it took for people to get talking about wrestling again was Sting appearing on AEW. Yeah. yeah. Dude didn't even say anything, and people yeah. were talking about it. That's yeah, very cool. Yeah, people were loving wrestling again. Oh, this is great. This is good. Sting's back on uh, TNT. You know, this is great. It's going to be great for wrestling again. But WWE just can't generate that sort of fanfare at the minute, no matter what they do. Yeah, AW's got a lot of very cool stuff going on right now. Because we've got that and we've got um, them versus Impact, which is very, very cool. So much, um, so much exciting stuff. You know, Kenny Omega appearing on Impact and stuff. And. Mm. The fact that WWE is so ignorant to what I mean, Triple H came out and was like, Oh, yeah, we're open to working with other people. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Are you actually? Are you going to send. <laughs> we'll say that. Just you're going to send Drew McIntyre to Impact, are you? <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Imagine if Drew McIntyre turns on AEW next week. That'd be so cool. It would never happen, but imagine. <laughs> the yeah. Fins will never do it. Because it, I'd love you know... Triple H to turn up at the back end of Dynamite. Yeah, yeah. 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 Make yeah. wrestling yeah. interesting again. That's why they're doing it. And they are making wrestling interesting again. Yeah. And of course, and now WWE is scrambling around trying to find stuff to make wrestling interesting again. Yeah. I think or make themselves interesting again. Yeah. It would be so much you know, good for both WWE and AEW if something like that would happen. But Vince is just so stubborn that he won't do it. You know? Yeah. He's too busy painting his eyebrows on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, our time is running out, but we'll, we will be back next week. We 100% guarantee it for TLC predictions. Mm-hmm. But for now, this has been the Games and Graps podcast. We are a video game and wrestling podcast that posts on podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> I got it right this week. <laughs> and um, we're, I think we're going to put this on YouTube, aren't we? Uh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we're going to get this video podcast on YouTube as well so you can see our faces. Yeah. You're welcome. Lucky you. <laughs> All right, so uh, go follow us. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, this is a great beard. Great beard podcast. Mm. We've all got the beards. Uh, go follow us on social media. It's at Games and Graps, and that's on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, which is now active once again. Sweet. And yeah, we'll be here next week. So from Finn. Goodbye. And Steve. Goodbye. And me, Sunny G. We'll see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. No looking assholes.